Japan and, and other countries and Cuba when you see them around these big established powerhouses of, of Aiba boxing they've got this kind of it is an aura aura is, is the right word they just kind of exude confidence and uh, here comes Anastasia cool I think we may have lost the sound system yeah I think the sound system might be gone but you can see what I mean about a it's quite a, a long fighter and she can use that range to her benefit for sure as she steps into the ring coming out of the red corner the Russian a junior women's nations cup winner already this year in the 52 kilo category a Russian women's junior national champion as well this year looking to add to her gold tally as we see the Spaniard Noelia Gutierrez coming into the ring in the blue corner she has tasted success as well in Lisbon in the junior tournament earlier this year. Success in Spain too. Former schoolgirls national champion in her country. And it will be interesting to see if we have almost a repeat of the Russian semi-final. Just has a bit more height as the fighter coming out of the red corner against Gutierrez, who really likes to get even lower than she already is and be a, an impactful puncher from close range, as we saw yesterday. Or should I say on Friday? And the last checks, I'm getting the headgear on. It does feel a bit peculiar suddenly not having the sound system in here. It does, it? it really does, the big screen as well. There's obviously some kind of problem with the power. I'm sure they're, they're working hard behind the scenes to get that resolved. But um, yes, different, different for the fighters. And I wonder if this will feel a bit more normal for them as well as what they were used to throughout this tournament so far. And if it almost take some of that intensity and adrenaline out of them slightly and they'll be a bit more calm and composed coming into the ring possible possible they're so experienced these fighters they've kind of seen everything really that i find very little phases them but but as you say this this kind of treatment with the ring walks and the, the lights and and everything like that and this is this is going out on georgian tv as well as on the the ieba and eubc stream which if you're listening to us that's what you're you're watching they tend to take things in their stride you're waiting backstage you're gloved up you're ready to go you're just focused in on on one thing and one thing only can Gutierrez here now prevent Russia claiming another gold medal that's the question I see straight away that left arm poised straight out from the Russian just trying to ensure that the distance is kept and start the control of the fight it's the Spaniard Looks to get in close and just comes around with a nice left. And the right as well catches on the chin too, which will please the blue corner. Very fast with that left jab, the Russian. Sorry, two or three at a time before them following up with a right. But the Spaniard is getting in close. And causing a few more problems as the fighter in red just has to step away for a moment. And pause and reset slightly. It's an interesting start. They're both throwing that one-two, aren't they? They're right on the borderline of range sometimes, not quite close enough. She steps in with a nice right hand there, Gutierrez. They seem quite well matched. It's just a question at the minute of who really gets off first because they're both essentially trying to do the same thing. It's also when you start with this sort of energy in the first round and then try and maintain it into the second, the third round can be very suddenly draining and slow from these fighters it's a nice little left coming in from Gutierrez there just before pulling away I feel at the moment for the Spanish fighter it's all about timing her approach forward and just avoiding the quick left jabs that are swiftly followed by a right sometimes from the Russian and they're quite effective at the moment in the last few seconds of this bout with about 20 seconds to go in round one She's just beginning to dominate Anastasia Cool in that second minute of the round. She's found her range. She has got slightly superior reach, and she's just found a distance, and she's eating that jab a bit, Gutierrez. As you said, she's got to find a way inside that. She's got to try and move her head. But Cool with a slight wry grin on her face there, really warmed into it as the round went on there. Well, it was a frantic start from both fighters and it's uh... interesting on the scores interesting on the scores though we've got split scores so two judges going in favor of 
of Cool of Russia, three going in favour of Gutierrez. I was in the, I'd be in the cool corner on that one. I thought that she, I thought that she brought that round home towards the conclusion of it. It was tight going into the final 30 seconds, you would probably say, but I thought she did enough in the last 30 seconds to win that round. I just thought maybe in the in the middle part, there were there were a few times when the Spaniard was able to get down underneath, and that job wasn't quite as effective, and Cool as well was throwing it a lot without connecting, and it was great for keeping her opponent away at times, but there was still a way round it and a way through it in a few moments just in the middle of that opening round. A lot of these bouts, though, that we've seen in the semi-finals and will undoubtedly see throughout today are going to be very close because to get to this point of this tournament you have to be a very capable fighter indeed as round two gets underway the russian far more aggressive to start things as cool starts to work with the couple of quick jabs and that right is coming around just a bit more frequently and the spaniard trying to fight back again that left hand of cool doing a really good job at just ensuring that's a little more difficult for Gutierrez to really connect cleanly. She's made a good start to this round, Anastasia Cool. She's got quick hands. She's getting on the front foot and just letting that one-two go, just, just unloading with it. And Gutierrez hasn't really got room to breathe at the minute. She's trying to punch with her. Good bit of head movement there, just slipped off to the left-hand side and then, and then threw a lead left hook. But then Cool replies over to duck away from that left that was coming round. And again, I mean, I hate to be too cheesy, but she is looking rather cool at times in the ring and fairly composed as well. So another good right just a moment ago from the Russian as they came away from each other. I'm trying with the left uppercut there. In the same sort of moment, catches a nice right as well on the Spaniard. A good combination, too, with a quick left-right. So Gutierrez still trying to stay on her toes, trying to stay mobile, doing her best to uh, avoid the onslaught that comes every so often from her opponent. She's kept the tempo really high in this round, Anastasia Cool, and, and the corners get the scores right at the start of the round, as we do when we look to the big screen away to our right-hand side. And... And you just get the sense that when they saw the scores after that first round, they would have said to it, listen, you didn't get that first round, split scoring, you need to do a bit more. Uh, and it's exactly what she's done. It's a lovely right hand as well that caught sweetly round the side of the head of Gutierrez just before the bell as round two comes to an end. And as expected, round two goes straight tens from all the judges to Anastasia Court who really, again, took it up a notch from the word go coming out of the corner. It was very aggressive, and it maintained that level of aggression throughout. It did, and this is a kind of scenario we've seen already this afternoon that you've seen relatively often. So she's two points clear with two of the judges, but this is still very much in play because the other three cards are 19 apiece. So Gutierrez is, has got an uphill task here because she's got to win all three of those cards and turn those into 29, 28 in her favour. That will give her three cards, and that will be enough to win. Anastasia Cool needs to get one of those 1919s in her favour, and this will go her way. So she's still in it here, Gutierrez. There's, there's no doubt that 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 Cool is in the in the driving seat, but she's just got to pour it all out here, the Spaniard, in the final two minutes, and see what happens. She's got to find a way to avoid that contact as well. That once again comes from the outset from Cool. There's the Russian fighter coming out of the red corner with the advantage on the points at the moment to start round three of the final of the light bantamweight final here in Tbilisi, Georgia. It's just more of the same with that left hand doing the initial dirty work and then trying to follow up with the right whenever it's possible. Gutierrez is swinging when she's in close but you're almost not sure if she's able to even see where she's swinging at times because there's always a red glove right in her eye line right in her face another good pop with the jab there in the center of the ring and the spanish fighter is just desperate to try and find a way through with a minute to go here in this final. She's giving it absolutely everything here, Gutierrez. Absolutely 
everything that she's got. Cool just leads off of the right hand there. Gutierrez just wins a big right hand over the top. The Spaniard there just comes walking forward, walking in really, trying to keep the pressure on, on Cool. She's definitely lifted it here in this final round. It is a close around this, a close around than the second, but that's that's a good bit of work on the inside there from, from Cool. But Gutierrez fires back. 30 seconds to go. Gutierrez straight in close once again. Once more cool. Trying to prevent her getting close. Left comes round the side there from Gutierrez. Another one just over the top. Right hand trying to work towards the body when they're in close. Final 10 seconds of the final round. Gutierrez walking as close as she can and continuing to swing right until the final belt. She's given herself a chance there. She's given herself a chance. It's, it's, it's an outside chance because she's got to win all three of those 1919s. But that was a close round. She did some neat work there, particularly towards the end. About 20 seconds to go, she threw a couple of good combinations and you could definitely make a case for her winning that round. It's just whether all three of those judges give it to her, which you would say is probably not going to happen. But as we were saying at the start of the round, she needed just to dig deep there, bite down any cliche you could think of uh, and, and do everything she could. And she did that. But it is Anastasia Cool who takes it. And that final round going all tens to the Russian. Once again, a unanimous decision, and despite Gutierrez's attempts at heroics in that final round, it's the Russian that will walk away with the gold medal. As you say, Andy, it was just Gutierrez knew she had to pull something out of the bag, and it was, I'm going to have to take the shots to get in close to be able to then start throwing the punches that she wanted to throw. But cool throughout that, I still thought she did a really good job, as she did in the semi-final at times, particularly in that first round of just using the, the left to keep her opponent at least on guard for a lot of it. And a lot of the times when Gutierrez stepped forward, she did have to take a shot before she was able to get in and start throwing punches herself. Yeah, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Cool, cool was the better fighter and, and deserved winner. I thought the closest round for me was actually the... Maybe the third round. The first and third were, were good competitive rounds.